What's up everybody? Today we have the Acer Helios 300 paired with a i7-9750H along with the GTX 1660Ti with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Also included is a small SSD of 256 gigabytes. A good bonus for this laptop would be that the screen is 144 hertz with a three millisecond response time. So without further ado, let's get into the unboxing of this. I personally have not unboxed this particular unit uh, yet, so we shall see what's on the inside. Well, right off the bat, this looks quite nice and interesting, to be honest, compared to some of the other laptops we've seen. Oh, this is a bit tricky. There we go. <clears throat> okay, right off the bat, you have the user manual, you have the drivers, whatnot, some information, very useful information. More useful information, user manual, and you get this interesting looking card. Premium service. So here we have the power adapter. It's, now this power adapter, let's talk about this power adapter for a moment. Usually you'd call this a power brick, but for, for a gaming laptop, this is rather small for a, power brick, so portability would be quite all right with something as small as this. And we have our cable that plugs into the wall socket and into the adapter. So here we have the laptop sitting. It's quite heavy, but we'll take it out in just a moment. By the way, this is a hard drive bracket for upgrading your storage capacity comes with a ribbon cable as well, which you plug into the motherboard. So let's get straight into opening this. Right away we can see the nice blue accents on this gunmetal frame. All right, let's carefully take it out. There we go. Keep that to the side. Nicely wrapped, to be honest. It's a tight squeeze, so just take care when uh, removing this plastic. So, throw the plastic aside. Okay, right off the bat, we have this. Feels quite solid. Has this aluminum texture on top. Quite good. Has good blue accents. Has the Predator logo there and everything. Now let's open it up real quick. This is always beautiful to see. Right off the bat, we can see it has slim bezels. Has a trackpad on the left side the chassis and let's check on the flex you get when you handle these kind of laptops honestly in this case I can't even flex it without lifting it up and it still does not flex I've seen some more expensive gaming laptops somewhere around two grand 2,000 US dollars, they flex. This one does not flex. This one actually feels much better quality than my laptop. This is quite impressive actually. Uh, it's a good feeling. Keyboard feels great. Has the usual stickers on the front. 144 hertz screen, three millisecond response time. GTX 1660 Ti. Hard drive and SSD, of course the Wi-Fi and HDMI. Has USB 3.0. On this side you have an HDMI port, another USB Type-C. 
Here we have a beautiful 1920 by 1080 full HD 144 Hertz 3 millisecond response time screen. It's an IPS panel and it's, it's I'd say it's pretty good panel. Uh, has excellent viewing angles, great brightness and great colors as well. Moving on to the keyboard. The keyboard has some nice feedback. Feels great to type with. Travel time is not too much and not too little on the keys. Also, they're backlit. Um, we have plenty of lighting in here. Some laptops, you cannot see the back lighting on the keyboards. But on this laptop, it's safe to say the keys are bright enough. We also got a logo on the back. Right there. Lights up. It's a nice, nice addition. Also, we can't help but to notice the exhaust fans on the back. We have two on the back. We have one on the side here. <clears throat> we also have another one on the side here, which justifies the awkward placement of the power uh, jack. All in all, with those kind of fans and exhaust ports, you wouldn't really have to worry about this overheating as much as other laptops. Some laptops share the same for the CPU and GPU. We have a quick benchmark here. We're going to run it. We'll see how high the fans rev, the noise, and the speaker quality. Give it a quick moment. Right off the bat, the volume is left on max for now, so we can check out the speaker quality. I would say it's good, not great, not bad, but it's good. Especially for a budget gaming laptop, I'd say it's excellent. We have the fans, of course. Let's, let's hear that for a moment. I know the loudness of the fans is a great concern for many people. Maybe you have people sleeping nearby or whatever. The fans themselves are not too loud and that's partly because of the configuration of the heat sink, the exhaust ports. Basically, the less heat, the less fan speed you'll have. However, there is a turbo button here, top left corner above the keyboard. Let's press that for a moment. And we're getting ready for takeoff, it seems. You probably won't need that, but it's always good to have. Should you need it, you'll really need it. Here we're doing a stress test using Superposition Tech Demo at 4K optimized under its settings. We're using MSI Afterburner to monitor and keep track of the CPU temperature, clocks, frame rate, video card temperature, clocks. So as we can see right now, we've just been running it on a loop for just a minute here. CPU is not too hot at all. GPU is not hot at all either. Each one is hovering around 62 to 64 Celsius, which is quite excellent for a gaming laptop. Here we'll dis uh, we will initiate a CPU stress test using CPU-Z. We are also using the Predator Sense program that came with the laptop to monitor the CPU temperatures. So let's begin the stress test on the CPU. Currently the CPU is at 68 Celsius. It will fluctuate and it will rise, that's for sure.
as you can see in a matter of moments we had a 10 to 15 Celsius rise in CPU temperature even with a stress test going on on a somewhat slim gaming laptop the temperatures are not really outrageous at all compared to most other slim gaming laptops it's kind of hovering around the 79 to 80 Celsius range with occasional spikes. So overall thoughts on this laptop are uh, it's a good laptop. For what you're paying you're getting excellent quality. You're getting a good screen, high refresh rate. Keyboard feels great. It doesn't overheat much. Feels great. Um, sound is alright. Temperature Temperature doesn't get too hot over the keyboard and touchpad for a gaming laptop Usually touchpads are junk. We all have to be honest with that touchpads are usually Very frustrating to work with but this is one of the best touchpads I've ever used um, It's snappy it's pointy. I believe it's using Windows precision drivers, which are quite well at handling touch feels great to touch as well quality's all right not all right quality is great on the touchpad so overall i'd say for a budget gaming laptop i would personally go out and buy one of these myself i kind of wondering why i didn't do that earlier but you won't be you won't be let down by this laptop it's a great bang for its buck that's for sure Moving on, we will present you guys with some gaming benchmarks, Assassin's Creed Origins, Battlefield 5, Red Dead Redemption, that's a heavy title, Control, and we'll see how it does, real life applications. So thank you for watching, if you have any recommendations or tips whatsoever, any questions, you'd like to ask just let us know down below in the comments and we'll be happy to honest uh, honestly answer these questions